Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about a couple of soft, spicy fragrances that are marketed towards women. Warm and sweet, soft, spicy fragrances. They are Fatal Intense by Agent Provocateur and Angel by Mugler. Angel for Women by Mugler. I really like these fragrances in a lot of ways, and yet they're challenging for me, both of them. And so I want to talk to you about the notes, and I want to compare these two fragrances and give you some better idea maybe about the differences between them. And if you ever wanted to pick one up, maybe which one you'd want to choose. I'm going to start with Fatal Intense by Agent Provocateur because for a few reasons, but mainly because I think this is a lesser known fragrance than Angel is. I think a lot of people have heard of Angel. It's an older fragrance. This one's a newer one. This one was released in 2015 and the perfumer is not listed. The main accords for Agent Provocateur's Fatal Intense are soft, spicy, vanilla, warm, spicy, sweet, fruity, leather, amber, floral, animalic, and fresh. And the notes are in the top, licorice, dewberry, chili pepper, and in the mid are champaka, red rose, lotus, and in the base, vanilla, leather, and amber. When I smell this fragrance, I mainly smell something sweet and slightly aromatic that smells like licorice. Not a sweetened licorice, like the black candy that you have probably seen people eating. It doesn't smell like exactly that way because that's sweetened. This has got the natural licorice. It has a natural type of sweetness to it, but it comes across a little differently, I think. But at the same time, if you don't like black licorice, you might not like this fragrance because of that. And I was the same way. When I first got it, I was very challenged and still am actually challenged by that licorice because it comes out quite moderately, moderately to high. <laughs> so when licorice is in the top notes and then there's dewberry, which is a berry and uh, you know, it's so it's going to be sweet and tart to some extent tart. I've never tasted one, so I don't know. And there is a fruity feel to this, and it's a berry fruity feel. But then very next after that is chili pepper. And yeah, you know, there is chili pepper. I can smell it. I can't tell that it's chili pepper. I just can tell that it's some kind of pepper that's red. So that's, uh, I think they're using it as a seasoning kind of as a seasoning in here and it gives it some texture actually it gives it a little bit of a pointy you know little pointy uh things coming out from it that kind of texture but it doesn't bother me and the mid notes are the florals which are champaka red rose and lotus i don't know whether i've ever smelled champaka but I did read that it's a heady fragrance note and heady just means that it's kind of not delicate and red rose is in here. I don't like rose very much usually, but it's important in fragrances. That's for sure. So it's in here, but it's not really prominent and the blue and the Lotus flower, uh, you know, I don't know that one either. I don't know what that one smells like. So I'm thinking it's delicate. 
You know what? I have pink lotus. Let me see. So I couldn't find my pink lotus material, but the profile on Fragrantica says that it is an aquatic floral note and that it is light and airy. And then, yes, there's vanilla in here. It's a base for this fragrance, the vanilla is. And with the amber that they mention, it creates a base, but it's not overly vanillic. And then they mention leather, which confuses me slightly. But you know, this is like a dark, this is a dark fragrance and it's very thick. And so if they put leather in there, could be any number of things. It is entirely possible that it's more of the more neutral animalic type of leather that Castorium would provide. And when you list fragrance notes in uh, your database or in the database, you submit your notes to the database that would um, publish them, you may not want to put something like Castorium because that would cap that would put people off. You know, vegetarians especially, vegans, they're not, probably not going to even want to mess with a fragrance that says it has Castorium in it. Now, yeah, leather too, but leather doesn't look like an animal and it doesn't look like an ugly little animal either. Leather is just a picture of fabric. So, you know, maybe they put leather on here, but really they may have used Castorium. Castorium is more neutral. Castorium is more natural. Even if it's a synthetic Castorium, it smells a lot more natural and neutral than leather where there's like chemicals additional to the, to the leather hide. So, you know, with this fragrance, it's very, you know, like I said, it's thick. It's very, uh, you know, centered around the licorice and the fruit and the chili pepper. And the florals are just in there to give something more of interest after the top notes go away. And then when it dries down, like hours later, you'll be smelling the vanilla and the amber. And the, and the leather is just giving it more richness. It just gives it something more interesting, rich, and comforting. Um, so I like this fragrance for bedtime because it's warm and soft, spicy. And something I didn't mention about licorice is that it has something in it called anethol or anethol. And that's the compound responsible for the characteristic scent of licorice. It's also in other things like anise and um, even in basil. It's aromatic and sweet, soft, spicy, and warm, and herbal. So anethol is responsible for that smell, even if they used it when it's coming from licorice. It's that's what you're smelling. It's also so sweet that it's considered to be um, 13 times sweeter than white sugar, the smell, and in flavorings, when they use it in flavorings. It's also used in other things in flavorings like uh, alcoholic drinks like ouzo, absinthe, absinthe, and rocky or reiki. Also something German called lead, lead Lebkuchen, Lebkuchen. It's in used in oral hygiene products and in small quantities, it's also used in natural berry flavors. So it's gonna give it a sweet richness to the berry flavor. And if it's low enough dose, it's just gonna provide that. It's not gonna be camphoric and it's not gonna be identifiable by most people as being similar to licorice. So the anethol, I just wanted to make sure I let you know that is just a chemical that's in, that's naturally occurring in these plants that I mentioned. It's not something that's added to licorice. And then with castoreum, they're not using anything natural castoreum. They're using synthetic castoreum. I mean, you know, practically 100% sure just because this is a less expensive fragrance and you can't 
I'm pretty sure you can't use natural castorium anymore in fragrances unless you get it from some country or something that doesn't have laws against it. So no, I, I don't believe that they're going to be using that in an inexpensive fragrance like this. Some people go for like the natural derived things like castorium and you can actually tincture it if you buy the material that is used for that. You can tincture it yourself and things like that. But it's just not worth it because the, nat the, the natural doesn't necessarily smell better to most people. Can't tell the difference between natural and synthetic castorium. So if we have synthetic alternatives to these animal products, then, you know, let's just use the original animal, animal product as like an inspiration for the fragrance material and use it in things that, you know, give it the richness that we want but we don't need to actually use the animal to do that and to do a good job with it. If you have to have natural castorium in order to make your fragrance, maybe you're just centering it around a natural, uh, a natural material or something, but most people, it's going to be wasted on them because they really don't need that. I wanted to make sure that you know that. So even when they put leather as a note in a fragrance, if you're vegetarian or vegan, you probably shouldn't worry about that unless you're buying something super high-end artisanal or niche fragrance that's really high-end. It's going to cost a lot for that fragrance. And so you're going to know from that. And they're probably even going to forefront that. They're going to say it's nat natural castorium. But if it says leather it, as a note in your fragrance, it's going to be vegetarian and vegan. Okay, so it's just inspired by something animal. And if you don't want something inspired by something animal because you're vegetarian or vegan, that's your choice. But I just wanted to make sure to clarify that. So the next fragrance is Angel by Mugler, 1992. And the reason I don't have the bottle here, I've got a sample, is because my mom smelled a sample of Angel a couple of years ago and she loved it. She loved it. And so I got her one and I got her the smaller size bottle. Like, you know, it's shaped like a star. You'll see it in the picture if you haven't already. And she has that and she likes it. Eau de Parfum. This is, this is modern. These are both modern fragrances that formulations that I got. And the perfumers for this fragrance are Olivier Cresp, and Yves de Chirin. So for Angel, the main accords are sweet, mostly sweet, and then patchouli, warm spicy, fruity, caramel, vanilla, woody, honey, powdery, and chocolate. And the notes, the top notes are cotton candy, coconut, cassis or cassia, melon, jasmine, bergamot, pineapple, and mandarin orange. In the middle, honey, red berries, blackberry, plum, apricot, jasmine, peach, orchid, nutmeg, caraway, rose, and lily of the valley. And the base notes are patchouli, chocolate, caramel, vanilla, tonka bean, amber, musk, and sandalwood. That's a lot of notes. You know, vintage fragrances, and this one's vintage, not this particular formulation, but it was created in the 90s and so it's considered a vintage fragrance and in the vintage fragrances a lot of times you see this especially with florals putting a lot of florals in a fragrance and you can't usually pick all of them out uh, individually you know they all are made to create an effect that's a different style than if you just have a few notes that stand out. 
So these two fragrances smell very similar, even though I don't know how many notes they share. The only notes that these two fragrances seem to share based on the listing in the database are rose, vanilla, and amber. So Angel doesn't have licorice. And, you know, I have a very hard time seeing all these notes and thinking about what could combine together to provide something that smells so similar to something that is heavy on licorice. And also, it actually does smell to me like it has licorice in it. Angel does. Angel smells warm and so soft and spicy, sweet, and, you know, dark, you know, a darker fragrance. It's got chocolate in the base. I think that's significant to know. It's giving it a creamy richness that is substantial. And this has a substantial base and it has a substantial dry down. But I think, I mean, I, I'll admit I have not worn Angel myself. I, I don't wear it because, you know, it's my mom's signature fragrance. But I don't uh, notice too much change throughout the time that you're wearing it as far as the way it smells being what's called linear and having the same smell throughout. It seems fairly linear, and that can happen when there's a lot of notes together blended in certain ratios that go together in the way that the perfumer designed. And it comes across as very, uh, 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 I'm not gonna say a single message because there's a lot of messages going on in here that contribute to the essence of this, the effect you have when you have this perfume and you're smelling it, but it's, it's pretty solidified. Like I don't get melon. And, you know, so, you know, these things like mandarin orange, that's helping with the effect, but it's not gonna really be standing out. Like even the pineapple, that's kind of a mild note anyway, and it blends in and it, it's giving it a fruity, tropical feel in there but this is a dark fragrance not a light fragrance so it's not highlighting the pineapple the high the pineapple is working with every other one to just give you an effect like jasmine that's going to not come out because this isn't a delicate fragrance that's going to highlight the jasmine and there's jasmine in the top and in the mid There is caramel in the base and you can smell that there's a caramel aspect to this fragrance in there. It's nice that they put plum and they put honey in here, which, yeah, honey, honey gives it a golden sweetness, sometimes syrupy, and it's kind of nice with ambers. So... This is an amber type fragrance. It has amber in it. Amber is a, a working material or group of materials that helps this fragrance to be substantial. And, you know, you, I'm pretty sure you know when you're wearing it, you can smell it. I don't smell coconut. That's also blending with everything to be a little more creamy. Give it something creamy. And the cotton candy... It doesn't have a particularly cotton candy like texture. This is, uh, what's the texture of this? Man, um, mm, it's like a thick, something thick and rich. Hmm, what, what kind of texture would that be? It's not like molasses, it's not quite that thick, but it's along those lines. It's, it's, it's towards like a honey. You know, maybe like honey that's warmed, that is more, it, it, it flows more quickly. Something like that. 
this isn't a fruity fragrance. It's got fruity aspects to it. It's not a floral fragrance in my opinion. And this is a, a thick, warm fragrance, a comforting fragrance. You know, when I first smelled the sample a few years ago, the first time I smelled it was a sample and I, it reminded me of a candle, some kind of a candle. Not to put it down, but just to say that it probably was some kind of a, a warm, rich candle, like a winter, the kind of candle you burn in winter time that it was reminding me of with all of these notes and how uh, rich and spicy it is. And spicy in a soft way. It's a little animalic. It's a little bit animalic, but not in your face. It's just like, yeah, it's probably the musk and the vanilla. The vanilla can be animalic. They use vanilla absolute. As far as patchouli, I know some people really stay away from patchouli because it just gives them a certain, either a concept that they don't like or something like that. But the patchouli is giving this a texture. And yes, you might be able to smell it here, but it's giving it a texture. Patchouli gives it a texture. <clears throat> like I mentioned that cedar, in a different video, I mentioned that cedar can give it a texture. Well, patchouli also lends a texture to fragrances and that's why they use it in so many fragrances. It also helps the fragrance to last longer. But patchouli's texture is not small pointy uh, things projecting from something. It's uh, a more coarse type of pointy. I don't know, like I think of something in the forest that you brush against it's just kind of pokey, but not sharp, pokey, rough. Yeah, patchouli can give it a slightly rough, more coarse texture to the depth and it evokes e deep emotions about a forest. And so it can be very relaxing for people when it's in a fragrance. I forgot to mention that the chocolate for me personally, when I smell chocolate, like if I drive by a place that manufactures chocolate and they're putting out the smell into the air, I think it has something, I don't know whether you would say animalic or musky, something musky in chocolate when it's being produced. And so if they have chocolate in this fragrance, that could also be contributing to this thing I called animalic or musky. And of course they do have musks in here and there are white musks that you can use that give an animalic aspect to, you know, a tone, an animalic. There are musks that you can use that will provide an animalic tone that isn't off-putting for most people. And so when you see musk in a fragrance and it's the color white and it looks like fluffy cotton, there could be hundreds of common, I mean, there's probably bazillion combinations, but hundreds and hundreds of white musks that could be chosen and used together in that fragrance. And you really can't tell whether you're going to like it or not. Some people don't like white musks because they feel like they're too sweet, but that's only because they've smelled fragrances that have white musk in them that are sweet musks and fruity musks. There are white musks that are fruity and there are white musks that are sweet, but there are also white musks that are dry and not sweet. There are white musks that can provide more of an ambergris feel to it. I mean, musks a lot of times contribute a texture to and a feel to a fragrance. I wanna compare them for you and it's gonna be hard. I have to say for one, I have not worn Angel on myself. But I've worn this one quite a lot, and it's one of my favorite perfumes. I would call this a staple perfume for me. And I wear this before bed, and it's a half bottle right now. I bought this off of FragranceNet, which is my favorite discount site at this point. They should practically, you know, pay me or something. 
They should probably pay me because I buy from them so much. And then I talk about it on here, but I'm not getting paid by them. And I don't know if I would even accept that. But this one, I looked it up on there to see the price for you. And I know I paid about $30 for this. It's not listed on FragranceNet or Joma Shop. It's only listed on Fragrance X right now. Last I checked a couple, maybe two or three weeks ago on FragranceNet, this was, but it said clearance. And when I see clearance written there on, on a discount site, I am confused about whether I should interpret that as this has been discontinued or did they just get a whole bunch and they want to get, you know, they want to get their stock down closer to what they want it to be. So I don't know that one. And if you know, let me know in the comments if that means if, if it's on clearance, does that mean that it's discontinued from a discount site? So I found it on Fragrance X and they're asking $30 for 100 milliliters like this bottle. And then of course, well, maybe not, of course, if you don't know, but Mugler is quite a bit more expensive in general. Mugler is uh, about $100 for 1.7 ounces. About $100 for half, yeah, for half this amount. It's about $100. So Angel is significantly more expensive, significantly. And probably they won't discontinue Angel unless they decide that it's too outdated because people don't want such a heavy, uh, wintry type fragrance. Most people wouldn't be able to wear either of these fragrances in, in summer, unless it's in the evening. I would say definitely wintry fragrance, but I personally, if I had this, I'd be wearing it all the time. I don't care. I, as long as I don't make myself sick, <laughs> That would that would keep me from doing it. But otherwise, I'm going to wear something that I feel I can smell. This one is produced by, I believe, Agent, Agent Provocateur Company is a lingerie company. I don't know how high high end it is, but this is an, inexpe an inexpensive fragrance. And how do they compare? So these are dried down now. This one's Angel. Mm. Angel has that orange in it that this one, Fatal Intense, doesn't have. But it's barely, you barely mind that it's not, <laughs> you barely mind that it doesn't have orange in it. So I think this one's lasting longer. Yes, I believe the Angel lasts longer based on this dry down I have on the paper. And when it dries down, you still smell the licorice. Same here with Agent Provocateur. You do smell the licorice even in the dry down. Man, they're so similar. It's just unbelievable that they don't share more notes. I'm gonna give this as fresh spray. And I'm going to give this one a fresh spray. I really want to give you my impression about the differences. It's a little scary to me that they may have discontinued Fatal Intense. It's just a little scary because, you know, I told you it's my, it's a staple fragrance. So staple fragrance. I don't want it to go away. I don't want my only option to be wearing Angel because of how expensive it is and that my mom's signature fragrance is that. Oh, well, gosh, I should spray more. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that I prefer Angel. I don't want to have to say that, but I might. Angel is brighter, and even though this has the spice of the uh, the chili pepper, 
and I do appreciate that. I think if it didn't have it, it would lack. But this one's brighter. Angel is brighter. Angel has a lot more going on when you smell it. Angel, Angel, Angel is more spicy, sweet, spicy. And uh, Fatal Intense, you know what? Fatal Intense isn't as sweet. I'll be honest, like this one isn't as sweet as Angel. And this one's sweet in a way that has the brightness that those fruits, and I pick out specifically the orange, produces a type of sweet brightness in the top that makes this a more open effect. This is heavier. This is heavy and seductive. I don't think of Angel as seductive. I think it could seduce some people for sure, but I think of the age range. I think Angel is probably going to be used by people that are on the older side, maybe, but not necessarily. But I do think of women in their 60s and older wearing something more spicy and like in that way that isn't the old fashioned aldehydic type of amber, like opium or uh, habanita by Molinard, like those type were like Arpege, you know, all those different ones from the 90s, 80s and before. <clears throat> this is a more newfangled way of giving a person that wants something like that, that. But I think they are so similar. These two fragrances are so similar that I think they're practically interchangeable. And if you're wearing this one, I don't think you're going to miss this whatever's extra in here i don't think you're gonna miss it so if they discontinued this which i have a feeling they recently did discontinue this then i have to decide whether i'm going to let it go and move on or if i'm going to get this and back it up because they still sell it on fragrance x and they're not saying it's on clearance there is a Fatale by Agent Provocateur, and I haven't smelled it at all, so I don't have any cl clue as to how it, how it like sort of relates to this. I'm assuming they wouldn't have put any of the licorice in there because that's specific to here. This is a more nighttime fragrance, seductive and warm, dark fragrance. And I think a man could wear this easily. Easily a man could wear it. In fact, it would smell very great on a man. But it's a lingerie company, so it's not really marketed towards men. Then there's another fragrance. When I think of Angel, I think of another fragrance that I'm going to do a video on. <clears throat> Maybe I'll compare. Yes, I'm going to compare Angel with the fragrance that was inspired by Angel in 1993-94, Animal, the house of Animal that had been, that was purchased by Parlux. And they worked on a fragrance that they produced called Animal, Animal for Men. They released it in 1994. And that fragrance was inspired by Angel for Women, Animal, Animal for Men. That one has honey in it, and that one is an amber fragrance. It's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous amber honey fragrance with a lot of other stuff. And I see here that Angel also has honey and amber in it. I have them both. And from my memory of wearing Animal on all, I don't feel like they're the same fragrance and I haven't smelled like the other things that people think an animal, animal inspired or, you know, like angel for men, amen. I think it was discontinued, but I'm not sure. And <clears throat> some people think that that one it was inspired by animal, animal for men because animal, animal for men came out before angel for men, but actually it was inspired by angel for women that came out in 1992 and then it was adapted towards being for men. So they were inspired, but they weren't dupes or anything like that. 
And I don't, in my memory, it just doesn't strike me as a dupe or anything. And so I want to compare those fragrances because I have them.